Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just lift this time up to you, Lord Jesus, that this would be a time that we would honor you, glorify you, praise your name. Lord, we come before you this morning knowing that you are the God of all creation. You created each and every one of us, and you saved each and every one of us who will accept you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, as we look at your word this morning, help us to keep it alive in our lives. And we would listen to what you have to say, Lord. The words that come out of me would not be my words, they would be your words. That this would be your time to give us a message from you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. This morning, starting out, I'm going to read some verses like I kind of blow them out so by the time that I'm done reading, I wouldn't be sitting there like this. Because old age does have a toll on us. So, we're going to, we're going to go through a couple of verses here in Acts. So turn with me if you, if you want to follow along in your Bible, turn to the book of Acts. And we're going to read out of the second chapter, the eighth chapter, the ninth chapter, the tenth chapter, the sixteenth chapter. So if you want to follow along, you can. If not, just uh, write them down and you can check them out after the service. Starting in Acts 2, 36 through 40. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom he crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and to each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises for you and your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to Himself. And with many other words He solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then reading out of Acts 8, 34 and 39, through 39, the eunuch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does a prophet say this? of himself or someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. As they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as a eunuch, and he baptized him. Then out of Acts 9, 17 through 20, So Ananias departed and entered the house, and after laying his hand on him, said, Brother Paul, or Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight, and he got up and was baptized. Then Acts 10, 44 through 48, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who were listening to the message. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they were hearing him speak with tongues and exalting God. Then Peter answered, Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. Can he? And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then in Acts 16, 14 through 15, a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira a seller of purple fabrics, a worshiper of God, was listening and the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things spoken by Paul. And when she, had, when she and her household 
had been baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. And then the last one, out of 16, they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him, together with all who were in the house. And he took them in that very hour of the night and washed their wounds, and immediately he was baptized, he and his whole household. The Word of God. It makes it pretty clear what we're talking about today. We had two baptisms today. Kathy was baptized and Andreas was baptized. So I thought, what a better time than to talk about baptism. I want you to look around at the families we have here today. It is interesting to notice the families. We have children and we have grandchildren here, but not just in my family. We have a father and son over here. We have a grandfather, two sons and some grandchildren back there, and a grandmother, sorry. <laughs> but we have a family back there. We have a mother and daughter right in front of them. Usually we have a mother and daughter right up here where one is missing. We've got some younger children here with Adam and Mary. We've got a brother and sister sitting here. And we've got the Wright family, which sometimes is the Green family, and they're all over the place. But there's a lot of family here. Family that has passed along the Word of the Lord. And that's exciting to see it pass from generation to generation. That first scripture verse that we read says this is to be passed even to those who are far off. So as we look at this scripture verse, think of this church family. We have a church family that are, are many different ages. We run from people up around 90 to I think Grayson's the littlest right now, isn't he? So, we go, we go from a year to 90 years. That's a large spread of the family. But we are a church family and we should all be sharing together. And it's interesting because there's different dynamics of ages of people that get baptized. In the last year and a half we have seen from young kids get baptized up to we have quite a few adults who made that decision to get baptized and follow the Lord Jesus. And that's exciting. And so as we look at baptism, we look at these Scripture verses, first thing we want to look at is in Matthew 3, we know that Jesus was baptized. Jesus followed in believer's baptism. Now, why did He do it? Because He said it was the right thing to do. So we're not going to discuss that. We're going to discuss what He told us to do. Now, there's many things as you go through the Word of God that God told us to do. He told us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we don't usually get a lot of questions about that. It's pretty easy. We love our neighbors as ourselves. That's not a tough one. He tells us, thou shalt not murder. That's pretty easy, pretty understandable. Come to Bible studies on Wednesday night, we get a little deeper into that exactly what? He takes out well beyond just murder. But we're not going to go there this morning. We're just talking about some of the things Jesus Christ has shared with us to do. Well, it's pretty obvious from reading His Word that He commanded us to be baptized. Here we're looking right after the crucifixion in the early church. Okay, Last week, we discussed the crucifixion. And we discussed the resurrection. Jesus Christ coming out of the tomb alive. 
And now we're seeing the early church going forth. And one of the things that the church was to share the Gospel and when people believed, they were baptized. As we looked at all these different instances in Acts, it's once they believed, they were baptized. Now, it's interesting because you get a lot of questions sometimes about baptism. Well, God in His Word told us to be baptized. Why is there question about that? If He tells us to do something, we should do it, right? We make a lot of different excuses not to do some of the things God commands us to do. God commands us to go out and share His Word, and I've heard every excuse in the book why we don't share God's Word. And sometimes we give excuses for why we aren't baptized, why we don't follow in believers' baptism. Well, the number one reason is Jesus Christ tells us to. How many people snuck in the back door here today? I don't mean you just parked in the back, because I parked in the back and came in the back door. <laughs> I did sneak in the back door. You know, did you sneak in the back door making sure nobody saw you? Because you didn't want any of your friends and any of your relatives or, or the guy that lives in the house behind, you didn't want him telling everybody that you were you were going into church, you know, and then you might be be looked at as a Christian. We didn't do that, did we? Everybody walked in the door. They had no problem with walking in the door. You had no problem with coming on into church. But sometimes we kind of get hesitant about those churchy things, doing them, because we, well, we don't want to look too radical. We don't want to look like we're one of those real religious nuts. <laughs> I heard somebody snickering there. Okay, you know what? I'm not religious. I've never been a religious person. I've been a relationship person. I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And all those who accept Jesus Christ have a personal relationship. And as part of that personal relationship, I, I, I got to be honest, I have a personal relationship with my wife. Her and I have a personal relationship. Would it not be kind of embarrassing if every time we went downtown, I kind of avoided ever talking about her or, or hid on the other side of the street and didn't want anybody to know we were married? What type of personal relationship would that be? It wouldn't be too long and I'd be in the doghouse. Not that I'm not in the doghouse sometimes anyway, but it'd be another reason to be in the doghouse. And that's the way we should be with Jesus. We should be excited to do the things Jesus tells us to do. And we should be excited to show that to other people. Religion is what Jesus Christ talked about when He talked to the Pharisees. Baptism isn't a religious thing. It's a relational thing. Jesus Christ said to believe and be baptized. You see all through Acts is the believers accepted the Lord. And they believed, they followed in baptism. Some people say, well, why do we got to be baptized? Well, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures maybe that, that make it a little clearer. Here. Let's look at those next couple of scriptures. Uh, 
I'm reading out of Romans 6, 1 through 7. What else, or what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into His death? Therefore we have been buried with Him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through glory, through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. <coughs> Are you willing to take a stand and show others that you have died to your old self and you're walking in a new life? You're turning your back on sin. You have repented of your sins. And you have died in your old self. And we baptized Kathy and Andreas today. As they went down under the water. It's a symbol of them dying and being buried. But then when they come back up, there's a newness of life. That doesn't mean that they physically die. But it means they died to their old life. And they rose again. Now there's going to come a time they're going to die. There's going to come a time when we will all die unless the Lord comes back for us. And at that time, we will arrive brand new with a new body. But this is a symbol of what we're doing right now. This is a symbol. We die to our old lives. We have risen again. Jesus Christ, we've been buried with Jesus Christ. As He was buried in the tomb. And we have arisen. We've decided to follow Him. Kathy's older than Andreas. But she has made that same decision He made. And He made the same decision she made. To follow Jesus the rest of their lives. To be new people. And it's a decision she made and He made. Nobody else can make it for you. Nobody else can make you a follower of Jesus. You do it yourself. I'm excited when I see families in church. But let's be honest. There's a lot of family members missing from churches nowadays, aren't there? There's a lot of people who don't go to church who have been raised in the Word of the Lord. And that's scary because we're seeing a pulling away of following God's Word. So today, we watch two people that read the Word of God and saw that God wanted them to be baptized. That God wanted them to follow in believers' baptism. To show all of you and now you guys can all hold them accountable as we should hold each other accountable and strengthen them and share with them and study with them. We're part of a family. You heard the term baptized into the family of God? I'm going to flip over to Mark 16, 15 through 16. And this is what Jesus Christ had to say. This is at the time after the crucifixion. He'd gone to the cross, paid the price for our sins. And then, after they buried Him in the tomb, and He'd come out of that tomb, risen, totally alive. He had defeated death. He says these words. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. But we're to go and preach. He doesn't just tell that to a few people. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're to go and preach to everybody you know. Everybody in your circle. Whether it be kids, grandkids, great grandkids. Whether it be friends at work. Whether it be any associates. We're to preach the gospel. We're to share the gospel with them. But it goes beyond that. It says in verse 16, He who has believed 
and been baptized shall be saved, but he who is disbelieved shall be condemned. Now, we aren't saved by baptism. We're saved by belief. Okay? You understand that? I'm not saying that the Word of God is not saying that you're saved by baptism. Nobody's saved by baptism. We're saved by Jesus Christ. We're saved by His death and resurrection. Because it says right here, but he who is disbelieved shall be condemned. It doesn't say he who is not baptized will be condemned. And as I was reading that, it hit me that these people just took it for granted that if you were believed, you would follow in baptism. Why wouldn't you? It's what God told you to do. It says he who has believed and has been baptized. Flip over to Matthew. Chapter 28, <laughs> verses 18 through 20. We call this the Great Commission. Many times we think about it. When we think about what Jesus Christ paid for us, He paid that price. And, and we think about His last words to us in earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus Christ said it. It's not a denominational thing. It's not a, a thing we do to be religious. It's not a thing we do to be better than anybody else. It's a thing we do because we're following what Jesus told us to do. It's that first step. It's that first step. You know, I, I heard the words just two days ago. You never know what that first step outside your door is going to lead you to. You never know when you go outside your door where it's going to take you. Well, that first step is people would believe and be baptized. They'd be baptized into the Holy Spirit. They'd be baptized as followers of Jesus because they believe. That's the Word of God. It's not a Baptist word. It's not a, a denominational word. It's the Word of God. And sometimes we just take those things and we don't think about them. We don't worry about them. We just go our little merry way in our life and I, I, I ask you, read the Word of God. Don't take my word for it. Anytime you question anything I say, read what God has to say about it. But I will guarantee you this. There will never be a more exciting journey that you will ever go on in your life, no matter where it is, than following Jesus. Because Jesus will take you where you least expect to go and what you least expect to do. I probably should have told Kathy and Andrea this, but they came down and they told me they accept Jesus Christ and the Lord said they want to be baptized. It is. It's the most exciting thing you ever do because it changes your life 100%. It gives you a new life and you never know what God will take you into. But, as He said, it will be with us all the way through that step now. All the way through that life. We're going to go to the last hymn. And if you feel Jesus Christ calling you to come on forward and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't know about His death and resurrection on the cross. You've never heard about that. or You've never really believed it for yourself. But you feel God telling you today that you need to come forward and accept His death and resurrection for punishment for your sin. Then come on down. If you feel that you want to come forward, you've already accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but you've never followed in believers' baptism, come on down and we'll talk to you about it. And if you feel 
this, if you want to join the church this morning, I invite you to come on down. And uh, can we cut just a go with just a couple because of the time, just a couple verses to land on this last song? Okay. And then after that, after this last song, we're going to go to the time of writing the fellowship with Kathy and Andreas. And I'm going to ask you, don't leave. I'm going to ask you to come on down during the right hand of fellowship and shake their hand and welcome them into the family of God. And then I'm going to ask you to go ahead and sit down again and we'll finish up. In just a few minutes, we won't be that late getting anywhere. So, Lance, you want to...